Hey everyone, in this video I actually want to talk about mastering subnetting. Uh, it's a topic that actually quite a few people have pinged me about, asking me to go into details about what are these slash cider ranges, how do you use them, and I'm going to cover this in a very general terms, but also I will talk about what is kind of Azure specific, because that's what some people have actually been tripping up on. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated. And make sure you hit that bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. Now, I am going to focus on IPv4. Uh, IPv6 is a very different beast. It has this huge number of IP addresses because it's a 128-bit address. And the subnetting issues we see with IPv4, it's 32-bit address space, we really don't see on IPv6. IPv6 actually has a dedicated 16 bits, a four digit hexadecimal word, dedicated just for subnetting purposes. And for the most part, we'll always see a kind of 64 bit subnet, which means we have 18 quintillion devices per subnet available. Uh, that's 18 with 18 zeros after it. So we're generally not going to run out. And we have so many of these because we have that 16 bits just for the subnetting, which gives us 65 and a half thousand subnets. Generally, we don't have the same problems with subnetting that we see with IPv4. So let's dive in. So I'm actually going to start with kind of a street analogy, which you may think is a little bit weird, but you'll get to where I'm going with this. So I can think about I have a street. And we're, we're going to kind of call this Lemon Road. And then I have a house on Lemon Road. Fairly standard little house. And I live at number seven. So that's my address. Now I want to deliver a letter to someone else. Now what we're going to do for the sake of argument, we're going to assume England is very illogical. And the house numbers do not go up in sequence along the road, which they do, but we're going to assume they don't. And instead for some entirely illogical region, house numbers are assigned when they are built on the road. So maybe three is over here. So I don't actually know where that is. The house number is entirely logical. It doesn't have any kind of real world um, entity. So I want to send a letter to that. Now I know my house number is kind of seven and I'm sending it to kind of, that's me, Seven Lemon Road. And I want to send it to 3 Lemon Road. Now, as a human being, it's very easy for me to see, well, which part is kind of the house number portion and which part is the street. And so I can see, well, look, the, the street matches. And so because they match, I will just deliver it myself. Now, because I actually don't know where that house is, what actually happens is I kind of go out and I stand on the edge of the street and I shout out, hey, who is at number three Lemon Road? And then that person hears it and they kind of shout back their longitude and latitude. So they kind of say, hey, I'm 51.4,000. This is in Greenwich, so it's kind of on that um, Greenwich uh, mean line, the meridian. And so now I've got kind of that longitude and latitude, sorry, latitude and longitude. So I now know the absolute physical location of that house. And so I will now just go and deliver that myself. So I can just walk along the road and I will deliver the letter myself because I'm on the same road. And I'll probably make a note of that. So next time I don't have to go and stand on the street and, and shout things out. So I can say, oh, number three, well, I know that is kind of this latitude and longitude. So I'm going to cache that. Obviously, English streets, very, very loud, people shouting all over the place. So that's fairly easy. I can kind of see which part is the house and kind of which part is the street. And I'm only going to deliver it if I'm on the same street as myself. Now, if I was going to send it to, let's say, 5 Orange Street, well, I can see straight away, well, again, as a human, I can tell which part is the street, which part is the house. They are not the same, so I would not deliver those myself. 
So because it's a different street, I won't deliver it myself. And instead in England, you have post boxes kind of on the end of each street. You can kind of put your letters in. These are actually red, if you're ever really curious. So instead I would kind of go out on the road and say, hey, post box, where are you? It would once again send back its kind of latitude and longitude. And so I would just go and pop my letter in the post box, which is targeted for uh, 5 Orange Street. Now what the post box then does, the post office picks it up, maybe goes to another post office and another one and eventually drops that off. I don't care. I'm only ever gonna deliver things on my street. That's kind of the furthest I'm ever gonna go um, with my delivery. And again, I've cached that. So I know, hey, the post box location, maybe it's um, number one, it's always number one on the street. I've got its kind of latitude and longitude as well. What on earth does this have to do with computers? Well, computers really work exactly the same way. They will happily deliver things themselves that are on the same network, um, but if they're not, they're gonna kind of pop it in the post box, a uh, default gateway, and get them to send it for them. Now, obviously, there, there are some differences here. So if I think about a computer address, when we actually deal with this, we don't see 7 Lemon Road now, we might see a friendly name, a DNS name, which resolves to an IP address. Out of scope for this. So what we have is this IPv4 address. That's kind of what we deal with. Now, this address is 32 bits. Remember, uh, a bit is a one or a zero. That's the two states it can have. And we break those into four bytes. Remember, a byte, so 8 bits, equals 1 byte. That's how we kind of think about that. And what we do is we kind of write that in this dotted quad format. So if I was thinking about what would be the equivalent of one of those addresses, well, if I think about an address, I might see 192 dot one six eight dot one dot five for example let's just say that's the address now you can see these things and i'll show you actually that in a second so that's my house number and my street i as a human can't really tell what part is the house what part is the street and nor can a computer so the other thing you'll commonly see is this subnet mask and a very simple example would be kind of, we'll just see the color, actually, we'll say it's 255.255.255.0. And in a very simple way, if we deal with these kind of 255s, that is telling us where that breaks down. So if it's 255, then that byte is the network address. So we can see, hey, look, that means 192.168.1, that is the network identifier. Where it's zero, well, that's going to be the host identifier, like the house number. So I can really think of the network identifiers like the street, but again, as a human, we can understand that very easily. This is kind of, oops, wrong color. This is kind of like the house number. So now we can tell um, which part is what. And again, we can see this. So if I just opened up a terminal super quickly, now in Windows, um, I can just use kind of IP config. In Linux, it could be uh, if config or there are IP address show commands, but you can basically see here. Well, I can see my address and then it shows my subnet mask. Now, mine isn't a 255.255.255.0, it's this 252. Ignore that. But fundamentally, I can go and see that on my machine and I can also see hey, what's the post box? I can see my default gateway in my environment. So I can go and see those things actually on my machine. And the nice thing is that, well, that, that's fairly easy for me to actually read. 
Now this, this thing is actually called the kind of the dotted quad format. And that's how, because it's a human, a 32-bit address. Oh yeah, you need to go to 10111100. It's really not that friendly for us to use. Now the way a computer uses this, so suppose I want to send something to um, 192.168.1.50. Okay, well, it can kind of map this down and it would look at the network identifier part, which you can tell because of the subnet, subnet mask tells it which bit is the network, which bit is the, the host address part. And so because this part matches that part, it's going to send it itself because they're equals. Now, if I was sending it to um, 192.168.24.10, well, it looks at the network part. Um, well, they don't match. So they are not equal over here. Let's move that one. So it's not going to send it itself. Instead, it's going to go and say, hey, I'm going to send you via my default gateway. Unless there's a more specific route, which could happen. So we kind of think about, hey, if it's green, we're going to send direct. We're going to send it ourselves. If it's red, we're going to send to a next hop. Now, I'm going to say it could be the default gateway. There might be other kind of hops, but you're going to have this routing table and that's what's going to drive how we actually send this. Okay, so let's actually just think about that for a second in the same way we had the house kind of analogy. So this time we just have the network wire and we have machines hanging off of it. So here, for example, I've got my machine. So this could be my 192.168.1.5. And hey, I'm talking to a machine over here, 192.168.1. Whatever I called it, 50. Once again, it's going to kind of go on the wire and say, hey, who is 192.168.1.50? Because this again is logical. It's not a physical attribute of the network adapter. So what it actually has to do is find it. So only if it's on the same street, the same local network connected to the same kind of switch, will it try that, because these are effectively connected into some switch. So what it does is something called address resolution protocol. It basically goes out on the wire and shouts out, hey, who is 192.168.1.50? So it's kind of broadcasting, hey, who is, who is this? This will respond saying, hey, 192.168.1.50 is this MAC address, and that's a address built into the physical network adapter. So it's going to say, hey, what, whatever that might be, FE.89. Whatever that MAC address is. So now it has the physical address on the wire, and it can kind of now send that packet, addressing that on the layer two. Remember, IP is layer three. It can send that. And once again, it's going to cache that. So it has an ARP cache that says, oh, OK, well, Da, 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 dot one dot 50 is this MAC address. So it's going to kind of make a note of that. Now, if I was sending to something else, 192.168.24.10, I know it's not on my local network. So once again, on kind of the thing about on the end of my network is kind of a router, and it might be 192.168.1.1. It's very common that the gateway will be dot one. So now I would once again do a shout out and say, hey, who is dot one? Because I still need to send it over the wire to it. It would respond with its MAC address. And I would make a, kind of a note of that as well. And I would send my packet destined to that dot 50 dot whatever to the router. Now that router is connected to other networks and other hub routers. But it's responsible for getting it there. It's not my problem. So we have kind of this ARP cache to help me map IP addresses to physical things. But I only, the key point, only deliver it if it's on the same network. And we can see this. 
So if we jump back over again, so what I'm gonna do super quick is I'm actually gonna clear out my ARP cache. Oh, I'm not elevated. Let's try that one more time. It's just launched that elevated. In fact, I'm not even gonna bother. Um, you can you can delete the cache, but what we'll just what I wanted to demonstrate is if I just try and ping a machine. So if I ping 192.168.4.114, so that can talk to that machine. Then it is on the same network as this machine. 192.168.4 is my target, and my address is 192.168.4, even if it was not 255.255.255.0. But now if I do an ARP dash A, we can see my ARP cache, and we can see a record in here that yes, I mapped that to the MAC address of that machine. And we'll also see I have an uh, ARP record that maps the gateway to its MAC address as well. So that's really what's happening behind the scenes for the computers. And the reason they care about am I on the same network or not is because, hey, there's this whole set of networking equipment and that broadcast they're actually doing to find that MAC address generally won't work uh, across routers. So it has to be on the same local network. Now, I do want to point something out. In Azure and software-defined networking, it, that whole resolution thing doesn't work that way. Because what you have, if you think about it, is when you have a set of addresses, all of your addresses are kind of this customer address space. It's not real on the physical network. And then the host you're actually running on is using NVGRE to encapsulate. So that's that network virtualization with generic routing encapsulation. And what it does is it basically wraps your packet in a different packet that is using these provider addresses. And they're the things that exist on the real network. So when you actually go and send traffic, what's actually happening behind the scenes is, hey, you're sending it to some target address, let's say customer address two, well, that lives maybe on the same virtual host, maybe it's on a completely different virtual host, physical address three. So there's basically these mapping tables that say, hey, CA2 is actually on host PA3. There's none of this ARP and broadcasting and any of that stuff. It just knows, okay, I need to go and send it over there. Which is why if you actually go and look at entries in an Azure virtual machine, so if I look at the oh, ARP cache for this VM, you'll actually see some of the machines it's talking to, the physical addresses are gibberish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C. Doesn't seem very realistic um, because they're not. It doesn't use them. It's not leveraged at all in kind of the way that we are useful, used to. So a little bit of a diversion, but a little bit of fun. So just make a note that that whole process of the ARP, that's really not working the same way with software-defined networking, which is what we're doing in Azure. But if we're on physical machines, it has to go and map all of that stuff out. Now, okay, so we talked about the idea that we have these addresses. And I talked about we have these 32 bits and we have this 255.255.0, this binary, all of this stuff. This is supposed to be about subnetting, so, so what's that got to do? So I said it's binary. So if I think of binary, so we have binary, which is base two. Um, as a human, we're kind of used to base 10, where we have kind of 10 to the zero, 10 to the one, 10 to the two, uh, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. Well, this is base two. Basically, I can have a state of one or zero, which in computers can kind of mean it's on or off. It has power or it doesn't have power, which is why we see that. And again, we have those kind of eight bits equals one byte. So a byte is eight bits. And so we need to kind of understand what's happening behind there, because remember this IPv4 address is 32 bits or four bytes. 
Now, I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on binary, it's not that thrilling. But just so we understand when we start talking about the masks, we can kind of think about, well, okay, so if it's this base 2, it's 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 6, and 2 to the 7. So the values. So we can think about, well, that could be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So that's how binary works. So you can think about, okay, so I can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's kind of walk through a few of those. So the math of this is if these were all kind of set to 0, well, then my value is 0, if I was to convert that to decimal. If I had all 0 and there, well, that equals 1 in decimal. If these were all zeros, but this was one zero, well, that's two, because it's two. If it was those, well, it's two plus one is three. So you can kind of see whatever number is next, everything added up before that point is one less than that number. So if I've got eight here, well, four plus two plus one is seven, because then we go to eight. Eight plus seven is 15, all of those ones, then we go to 16. And I can think about, for these, um, I have these different states I can use. And if all of them were set, so if all of these were 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, that's 255. So 256 possible combinations, because that could be 0 as well. So it's 0 to 255, which is 256. That's kind of a, a key point when I think about all of this. And this is what is happening when we start thinking about these subnet masks and the IP addresses. Now, calculator is your friend here. So what I kind of recommend is in calculator, you can go and you can put it in programmer mode. So I'm in here. And then what I could do is, well, I could either select decimal and I can type in the number. You can see it's showing me the binary version over here. So as I type that in, it shows me, oops, try that again. I can see the binary, so those four ones. If I needed 32, for example, I could clear and just type in 32, it's showing me the binary. And notice there it's that same thing. It's showing me the binary version. So that's kind of an easy way to work out really what the binary is. So that's kind of a key point to all of that. So let's go back for a second and think about, well, okay, now I understand what binary is. Okay, yep, eight bits can be up to 255. So we had these addresses and we talked about, well, this subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So what was that really doing? So let's give ourselves a bit of space. And I can think about then, okay, so 255.255.255.0. So we now know that 255, we're saying all of the bits are ones. All of the bits are ones. And then over here, they're all zeros, they're not set. So that now, from a, a binary perspective, that tells me when the subnet mask is a one, that's saying this is the network address. So that is the network identifier. Where it's zeros, that tells us it is the host identifier. That's how we kind of use the subnet mask with everything we're trying to do. So when I had an address of 192.168.1.1.1, um, now, so I have to work out the binary of that, and I'm going to cheat here, so I mean, that's, so that's 
128 plus 64 is 192, so that's fairly easy. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 168, I'm never going to remember that, so that's 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Uh, 1 is easy. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then 5 is 1 plus 4. So, got a different colour. 1, 0, 1 is 5. So in binary, that's what that address was. And again, when we overlay that the subnet mask, we know this portion is the network address, and the other part is the, the host address. And then remember, if I was trying to send to dot 16, okay, so I'm sending to 192.168.116, Again, it's all binary, so one, one. Got to get quicker and quicker. Probably going to miss out. I'm going to miss out a digit at some point doing it this fast. And then 16, well, that's, that's an easy one, remember. So 16. So if I want to send to that as a computer, well, I, I'm comparing those network identifiers. So I'm looking and saying, okay, um, my source address is that, my target is that. I really care about the network portion. So I lay the network mask over it, the subnet mask, where it's ones, that means it's the network. So I'm basically comparing my source to my destination. Okay, they equal, I'm going to send it myself. So that's kind of the key point about all of this. Now, if I was sending it to 192.168, remember, what did I say? Uh, 24, for example, um, 6. If that's my destination. So now it's the same first part. I'm definitely going to miss a zero at some point. So now I'm sending it to 24. Um, so 0, 0, 0, uh, 18, sorry, 16 plus 8. So that one and that one. And then six. So six would just be four and two, which is that. So once again, it's comparing my source address to my destination address. Well, those do not match, which means I'm going to send it to the gateway or whichever the next hop is configured um, within my environment. So that's kind of the, the key point here. So hopefully that makes sense of what the subnet mask is doing. It's telling me which bit is the network, which bit is the host, and the computer uses that to say, hey, do I try and send it directly or do I send it via the gateway? Now let's talk for a second about these host address spaces. Now I've been using these very nice 8 bits. Um, if the host address is all zeros, this is called the network address, essentially. So we're always going to lose that kind of network address. If it's all ones, that is the network broadcast address. So I can't use that. I could never give myself an IP address of dot zero or dot two five five in this scenario where the subnet mask is two five five two five five two five five dot zero. It's really about the number of bits for that host address. They cannot be all zero or all ones. Those are reserved by the IP protocol for that network address and for the network broadcast. So the network address of all zeros, you could kind of think, I guess, a bit like, hey, if this was the street, zero Lemon Road is just the street name. And then all ones would be all Lemon Road. So if I sent it to all Lemon Road, it would actually get sent to every house on the street. So that's what really these are doing over here. Network address is identifying the network. Network broadcast, if I send to that, it sends to everything on that network. So we always lose two with IP. 
Now, I'm going to talk about saying Azure specific. So for Azure, the first usable IP address, so in this case, it would be one. Actually, I want to do that in blue. Oh, let me do that. Oh, trying to go for too, for too fast. Let's do that in blue, just so we can see the difference between what is IP and what is Azure. So Azure uses the first usable one is reserved for the gateway. And then the next two, i.e. 1, 0 and 1, 1, these are all zeros because it's 8 bits, but it, it could be less if I wasn't doing it that way. Those are reserved for kind of DNS mapping. So in Azure, lose three more. So that's kind of an important point. So essentially, in any subnet I create, any network, we're going to lose five usable addresses in Azure. And actually, AWS does the same thing. So in AWS, I would lose um, five as well. So just bear that in mind. This is important when we start thinking about, OK, well, how big does my subnet need to be? How big should my mask be? Um, remember, you're going to lose five in the cloud just because of how it actually thinks about those things. So this has all been very, very easy, really, because we've had these nice blocks of 255, 255, 255.0. These nice, easy things where I can say, well, that's the host, that's the network. The challenge is, sometimes I need less addresses. Sometimes I don't need 256 over here. Um, I might need eight or 16. I don't want to waste an entire eight bits on the host if I only need eight addresses. I don't want to waste a slash 24 network. So, okay, what's a slash 24 network? That, that was saying. So there's something called CIDAR, uh, a class list into domain routing. And so this subnet mask I drew here is actually a slash 24 when I actually think about CIDR. Because it's using 24 bits for the subnet mask. 24 bits make up the network. 8 plus 8 plus 8. So that's a slash 24. And where this comes from is originally with IPv4, it was a class-based system. We had this idea with this classful networking that we had like a class A, a class B, and a class C. So if it was just the first eight bits made up, kind of the network, that was a class A. If the first 16 bits, that would be a class B. And if it was the first 24, well then that would be a class C. And in the early days of IPv4, there was plenty of IP addresses, watches didn't have IPs, phones, fridges didn't have it. That was enough. And we could just give out these big blocks of C's or B's. A's was very, very rare. So that was all good. But then as IP addresses got a bit shorter and it realized this is so wasteful, uh, maybe as a company I need more than a class C, but I certainly don't need an entire class B. And so the whole point of the CIDR in this class list, I could now change how many bits are being used for those allocations. I could say, hey, I need a slash 20. Um, or I need a, a slash 12. We could actually change how we're doing that. So the CIDAR format is actually very, very common now for using this. So if I was to look at our example of our combining 192.168.1 and that subnet mask, well, in a CIDAR, that would be kind of a 192.168.1.0 slash 24. We don't care about host part. It's, it's not set. So that would be kind of our side eye. And you're going to see that a lot when you deal with the clouds. And to be honest, you're just going to see that a lot in general now. So this slash 24 is all very nice and easy to follow because we have this nice line between the network portion and the host portion. But in reality, it's really not that common anymore. Um, we might need a smaller portion or a bigger portion. So let's really think about... Remember that binary again and what we can do. So remember, from a binary perspective, we'll jump to this part, 
is kind of the 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Because we can kind of go backwards. So we can actually start stealing bits from what we've kind of got used to the idea of being the host as for the network. I might say, well, actually, now this bit I'm going to use for the network as well from that final eight bits of that 32-bit address. So this would actually be a slash 25 because we're assuming in front of all of this We have 255, 255, 255. So this, remember, equals 128. So that would actually give us a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 128. And now I have this address space to use for hosts, 0 through 127, because all of those added up would be 127, one less than the next digit. Remember, though, we would lose regular protocol, lose two, all zeros, all ones. Couldn't use, all ze couldn't use that and couldn't use all ones for those seven bits. We'd lose two. Then in Azure, we'd lose another three for the gateway and two DNS. So I have 128 um, actual addresses, zero to 127. We'd actually take away five, so we'd be able to use 123 of them. Likewise, I could borrow even more bits. So this could be a slash 26. So now, well, that equals 192. And again, we're losing even more bits that we can now use for the host space. Now my host space, I'm, I'm left with 0 to 63. So again, 64, but usable will be 59 now, because again, I lose 5 in Azure. I, I can keep stealing. I can say, well, I actually want a 27 because I need smaller and smaller subnets. So now we can kind of think about it as right as 192, this is 224. These would all be my kind of subnet mask. And I can keep doing this. I can say, hey, a slash 28, a slash 29, and kind of just steal more and more bits that I'm using because I need less and less hosts. Now, a key point, and I should have really stressed this earlier. Remember I talked about the idea that, hey, why do we break up into subnets? And in a physical world, in ye old days, it was about all well, the network equipment and its ability to pass those kind of address resolution, those mappings of IPs to Macs. Remember, that doesn't apply in a software-defined networking world. In a software-defined networking world, we're using this nice NVGRE. So why do we bother breaking things up into subnets in a cloud. Let, let's talk about Azure. Well, I might break it up because I want logical grouping. I maybe have a, a domain controller set. I have some different types, maybe some that talk to the internet, DMZs. Which comes to the next point is, well, the application of network security groups. Oops. The ability to create those rules that say, well, this can talk to this. And it could be app security groups as well, but it's more about the application of those. So this is kind of why subnets in Azure. And again, it would apply to other kind of clouds as well. Um, I might be using things like service endpoints. So with service endpoints, it's about allowing a particular subnet and what's in that subnet access to PaaS services. It could be, hey, I'm delegating a subnet. Some PaaS services, for example, require their own subnet in which they're going to run. So I have to delegate a subnet. And then there are other reasons as well. But that's why we still think about subnet in the cloud. It's not about that broadcast anymore, but I still need it for other types of constructs and things I want to do. So I just want to make sure I kind of covered that. But now we can see, OK, well, I can use a different number of bits um, actually for this. I, I can change those bits that I'm leveraging depending on how many addresses I actually need. So that's what I would do. I would say, well, how many bits do I need 
to do whatever my workload is. So I could say, okay, well, maybe I need eight hosts. So if I was thinking, okay, I need, let's, let's, change tweet, let's say, uh, yeah, eight hosts works. So I need eight hosts over here. Now remember, we lose five because of the two for the protocol, three for Azure. So I need to add five to what is going to be the usable address space. So I need 13 IPs. Well, so 13 IPs, there's 16, so I'm going to go one down. Now that would obviously give me 15 IPs, um, sorry, 16 usable, zero to 15. Remember we lose five, so that would give us 11, which is more usable than I need, but that's what I would have to do. So that means I need four bits for this network. Because again, that, those four bits give me zero to 15. 16 minus five, 11 usable, great. So I know, well for that part then, if I'm using four bits for the host, well then 32 minus four is a slash 28. So that's the size network I need if I want eight hosts to actually run in there. Again, we have add the ones we lose. It would give us a few more than that because we'll actually have 11. So that would be 11 usable. So it's more than we need, but it's pretty close. We're not wasting too much. Um, we generally would feel pretty good about that. Let's look at uh, an example on something. So there's a subnet calculator. And this can kind of help show that. So what we just did, let's kind of zoom in a little bit. So we did kind of a one dot zero. And that was its class base. Now it does have a class list option, but I'm just gonna stick to this. But I can say, well, instead of doing that, I want you to use 28 for the mask. And so notice what it's showing me. Hey, you therefore have, remember you're losing the all zeros for the subnet ID. You're losing all ones for the broadcast. So it's saying you can have 14 hosts in that subnet. Now remember it's 14 because it's not considering Azure. Azure takes number three, which is why you would have 11 hosts per subnet. Now realize I'm only using four bits. So I would actually then, the next subnet I could use, I could actually do a, it would start at 16. So now the usable address space is 17, because dot 16 is all zeros, to 30. 31 would be all ones. So now I'm actually breaking it up into smaller actual chunks of that IP address space. Uh, let's pick a different size. So let's actually, within here, let's put this back to zero and let's change it to 26 bits. So remember with 26 bits, we're basically stealing two bits from what would normally be the host address. And so we can have 62 per subnet, but in Azure it would be 59, we lose three more. And so the usable address space is one to 62, but in Azure it would be dot four to 62. And again, the all zeros is the dot zero, the all ones would be 63. So the next network we could use would be what? Well, it would start from 64. And now we can see, okay, now it goes, remember all zeros is the subnet ID, so we can't use that. So the usable addresses is 65 through to 126. Again, in Azure, it would still 65, 66, and 67. So 68 would be the first usable address. So this is where it gets more complicated because it's not just these nice whole round numbers. What we used to thinking as part of the host now actually becomes part of the network. And it's all this weird binary that computers happily do behind the scenes. As human beings, it's not quite so friendly. Um, but let's look at that. So let's, let's take an example of actually using now 
we're doing a slash 26. So we're actually talking of this scenario. So we're stealing two bits from the host address. And let's just look at the math for a second of that. So if I think about, I'm going to do, um, so what would my subnet mask be? So my subnet mask is a 255.255.255. Two five five dot one ninety two, because I'm doing a slash twenty six. I'm stealing two bits, the highermost bits of those one twenty eight plus sixty four is one ninety two. So let's think about what the IP addressing actually looks like. So if I had an IP address of one nine two dot one six eight dot one, and now we'll say sixty eight. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of that, that math again, but basically was it 11000010, one, one, zero, 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 one. And now remember what's happening. So if 68, what is that? The first two bits are still the network address. Zero, one is 64 out of that. And then, 0, 0, 0, I've got 4 left, 1, 0, 0. So that's now the host portion. That is the network. So the line now goes down here. So now imagine I wanted to talk to 192.168.1.72. Okay, well we know those parts are all the same. Okay, let's just see if I can be brave. Probably shouldn't have risked that. Copy that. And let's see if we can paste it. There we go. So we know those parts are the same. They're not going to change. 192168, exactly the same as it was before. It's all good there. 72. Okay, so what does 72 look like? Well, 72 is still that 0, 1 there. But now... 64, 72 is 8. Okay, so 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. I think that's a bit of right math. So if we look at the network portions of those addresses, they are equal. It would send it itself. Now let's say I was sending to 192.168.1.140. Well, once again, the first parts we know again are all the same. 192.168.1, we're all good. We know they have not changed. But 140, so what's 140? And again, if we're not sure of the math, we can bring up our trusty calculator. And I can type, I go in decimal mode, type in 140, and it's showing me the binary. Okay, the binary is 1000, 1100. Okay, that helps. So now it's 10, 0, 0, 1, 1. That's network, network. Um, they are not the same. So it's going to send it to the gateway. You will not try and deliver that packet directly. It will send it to the gateway instead. So that's really the, the key point on those things. It, for us as humans now, it gets a lot harder to do when we're not dealing with 255.255.255.0, but now instead we have a 255.255.255.192, which is a slash 26, I maybe cannot as easily look at that and work out, okay, is it in the same network or not? Computers don't care. They're not dealing in the same things we are. It's all the binary. It's very easy for it to map that mask. Because remember, the subnet mask was basically all those ones That was the subnet mask. So it can easily just overlay that to work out the network and the host portion. 
So that's how those works. And remember, in terms of addresses, if we were in that, that network right now, so remember, what we were actually dealing with in a CIDR world would have been 192.168.1.64 slash 26. So it's telling us, because remember, though that bit here, that 01, is part of the network address. So it would have been 192.168.1.64 there slash 26. It's telling us what that network was. And again, remember, so what would have been usable IP addresses for us? So all zeros in this case, those six, well, that's the network address, so I, I can't use that. If it was all ones, well, that's the broadcast. I can't use that. So we always lose two. And now in this case, it's kind of the one that would have been the gateway, one zero and one one would have been DNS. So in a 64 world, that would have been, um, that would be 64, that would be 65, 66, 67. So the first IP address I could actually use would be 68. That's how those things are all kind of piecing together. So it's a little bit ugly um, for us as human beings. Computers gobble this stuff up, say, oh, this is, this is very, very easy. But just kind of remember those things. Um, Let's look at an Azure virtual network. And again, these subnet calculators are great. It's showing exactly what I just kind of showed you there. It was showing you, hey, look, the first usable is 65, which would have been the gateway in Azure, 66, 67, the DNS, so 68 would have been the first usable. So I, I really like these calculators. But what I've created over here is a virtual network in Azure to show these. And what I went and did was actually create a whole bunch of subnets. I've got the regular slash 24s, i.e. the 255, 255, 255 dot zeros. And if we look at one of those, well, it shows us very easily, okay, the address space is this dot two dot zero to two dot two five five. And essentially what you can use is 251 because there are five reserved by Azure, which really two reserved by the protocol and three reserved by Azure because it's zero to 255. So remember that's two, five, six possible combinations. But then what I did is I went and created a slash 25. So remember that would have been the 255.255.255.128. So if we look at that network, well, okay, we can see now it's dot zero to 127, which is what we would expect. And again, we have 123 usable now because we lose five. Then I thought I'd have a bit of fun. So after that, the next usable address space would have been .128. So I went and created a slash 26. So there we can see, okay, my address space is now 128 to 191. But again, you get 59 usable because we lose five through Azure. And then the next one I can create would be 64 plus 128. So that's 192, which I created over here. And once again, it's showing you the range and how many Azure is reserving. And then I create the smallest one I possibly could, a slash 29. You can't go any smaller than that in Azure because remember it reserves five. Well, a slash 29, remember is leaving me four bits, essentially for the network, sorry, slash 29, then me three bits for the actual host, which would normally be zero to seven, so eight possible uses. But because Azure reserves five out of my zero to seven, so I left three usable left. So it's impossible to create a subnet smaller than slash 29 in Azure because slash 29, remember, only leaves me three bits, 32 minus 29 is three, three bits less for the host. So zero to seven is eight possible IP addresses, but if Azure takes five, that leaves me with three. So if I try to do a slash 30, which only leaves me with two bits, well that's zero to three, so four, that's not even enough for Azure to function, which is why a slash 29 is essentially the smallest possible network you can create. 
Then I created a, a slightly bigger one. I created a, a slash 16 with a slash 28. Then I created another little tiny one. But you can see in all of those things, it's showing me, hey, how many you have and how many Azure reserved. And it shows you the IP space. So that really helps understand uh, what are the networks, how the subnetting works. Um, so the key point really is just about how many do you need? The service says it needs five IP addresses or eight IP addresses. Work out how many you need. Think of potential growth because it's not, once you've got things in a subnet, for example, it's not really easy to change the size of that. If I'm in the cloud, I add five because that's what's reserved. If it was just regular IP, I lose two. So how many do I need? What is kind of that overage required by the cloud or the protocol? Two for the protocol, three additional for Azure or AWS. Okay, so that means I need 13 usables. So if I need 13 usable IP addresses, if I think of binary um, to get to 13, I'm here, I need four bits. Remember, because 16 is the fifth bit, which means I need four bits, um, zero to 15. And then I can say, okay, so 32 minus four gives me, I need a slash 28 for that workload. So that's how we can think about going to the, the smaller ones. Now, technically you could go bigger. Um, sometimes you saw my home network, so I'm actually using the Eero gateways and they actually do a slash 252. So what Eero is actually doing is instead of going 255, 255.255, they say 252. So they've basically taken off three bits. So they're doing six bits and then leaving those for the host as well. So they actually use 10 bits for the host portion all on one big network. That's how it works. It doesn't care. So you might see it the other way. Generally not. Uh, generally you're going smaller in, in most things, but absolutely you, you could go the other way if you really wanted to. And that's it. So that, that's kind of a, a summary of it, why we do it, what the subnetting is. Again, we don't want to waste IP space. So we think about we create the subnets um, based on the actual usage we have. As always, again, please subscribe if this was useful and that would be appreciated. And uh, until next time, take care.